Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on the Cambridge Prime v Sample Test, September 2020. This is the Mathematics Paper 2, for Stage 5. You may use a calculator, let's start. Question 1. Write a number that is 100 times greater than 42. That is simply 42 times 100, which is 4200. Zero, zero. Question 2. Here's a list of symbols. Less than, equal to, greater than. Write one of the symbols in each box to complete each statement. So 2.34 plus 0 0.43, when we do the math, it becomes 2.77. And 1.55 plus 1.11, which is on the right side, we'll get 2.66. 2.77 is obviously greater than 2.66. So that's our first one. Now, 5.4 minus 0 0.9, that's going to be 4.5. 6.4 minus 1.9. Once again, it's 4.5. So these two are equal. That's our answer. Let's go to question 3. Draw a cross in two more squares to complete this symmetrical pattern. So the mirror line is going to be the diagonal line drawn here. Now let's see which crosses already have their mirror images set. Only then there could be a symmetrical pattern. So this cross is placed on the line, which means it does not need another cross to be its mirror image. When you flip it over the mirror line, it's just the same cross. Now for this cross, the mirror image will appear over here. So we have to draw the cross there. Now this cross, the mirror image is already here. So these two don't need to draw again. And as for the last one of down here, if we take the mirror image of that, it'll be over here in this square over here. So we draw a cross there. And once we're done with drawing these two crosses, this figure actually is symmetrical along this line. That's our answer. Let's go to question four. Calculate one by three divided by three. That's gonna be the same thing as one by three times one by three, and that'll end up as one by nine. We multiply numerator and denominator. So that'll be our answer. Question five. This is a sorting diagram for birds. Here's information about two birds. Write the name of each bird in the correct place on the sorting diagram. So the first one, which is the alpine show. Maximum flying height is 8077 meters, and it is endangered. So let's see which one of the two rows and two columns we'll place this in. The flying height is 10 kilometers or less because 8077 meters is 8.077 kilometers. And this is less than 10. Therefore, it is less than 10 kilometers maximum flying height. And it goes in this column. Now, for the row, since it is endangered, it's in this row. So the alpine show, which is the name of the bird, has to go here. Now, for the common crane. Maximum flying height is 10,058 meters and it's not endangered. So this maximum flying height is 10.058 kilometers. And in this case, it's greater than 10 kilometers. So its maximum flying height is 10 kilometers or more. So it goes in this column. Now it's not endangered as well. So it's this row and the intersection will be over here. So you write common crane in that box. And that'll be our answer. Let's go to question six. Write the missing fraction in the box. So the missing fraction is gonna be five by 10 plus this value we're jumping up by, which is two by five. And two by five is equal to four by 10. You can multiply both the numerator and denominator by two. So five by 10 plus four by 10 is nine by 10, which is our missing fraction. By the way, if you write 0 0.9, it's wrong. If you write 90%, it's also wrong. Although these are the same thing as 9 by 10, they're equivalents, but then it says to write the missing fraction. Therefore, you can't write decimals or percentages. That's our answer. Question 7. Drawing on all the numbers that are multiples of 4. Alright, first let's start by identifying what is the criteria for a number to be multiple of 4. Of course, the last two digits of any number has to be a multiple of 4. If it is, then yes, the whole number is a multiple of 4. Let's start with 450. 
last two digits are 5 and 0, which makes 50. And this is not a multiple of 4, since when we divide by 4, we get 12.5, not an integer. So, this we cannot draw a ring around. 540. This is a multiple of 4, since 40, last two digits, divided by 4, we get 10, which is an integer. So, we can circle this. 504. Once again, the last two digits are 0, 4. If we divide this by 4, we get 1. That is an integer. So there's also a multiple of 4. 405. Well, we can realize that since the last digit is odd number, it's not divisible by 2. And since it's not divisible by 2, it cannot be divisible by 4. 4 is also an even number. So we cannot circle this. And for the same reason, we cannot circle this. 544. We can circle this because the last two digits are 44. Divide by 4, we get 11, which is a whole number. So that's our answer. Question 8. Here's a pentagon. Regular pentagon. It's divided into 10 equal parts. What percentage of the pentagon is shaded? Well, we know that all 10 of these parts are equal. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 parts which are shaded. So the percentage shaded is going to be 4 by 10 multiplied by 100 to make it a percentage. How do we get 4 by 10? We have 4 shaded parts and the total is 10 parts. So 4 by 10 times 100 is 40%. That's our answer. Now for question 9, here's an isometric grid. Join dots to draw a cube. So let's start by drawing one vertical line to any number of dots. So let's say we draw it to with a length of three units. So now we want to draw the width right over here. Now the length of the cube, like this, we extend it from one of the corners first. So we have three lines drawn like this. Now we extend from these corners. They all have to be three units long, remember. So that's three units here, three units, Three units, three units, three units, three units. And remember, don't draw the backward lines. Because if you drew these lines, it'll look somewhat like a hexagon. More than a cube. With six lines drawn through it. So don't draw these lines at the back. Just leave it like this. It doesn't matter what length you choose. You could even choose two and you could draw something like this and it doesn't matter where you choose to draw the cube either it can even be drawn all the way back here and you'll still get the mark as long as the lengths are correct that's the answer question 10 lily uses these number cards to make three digit numbers the nearest multiple of 10 to all of lily's numbers is 350 while all the possible three digit numbers lily makes so basically what they're saying by saying nearest multiple of 10 is 350 is that if you round a number to the nearest 10 you will get 350 so all the numbers that round to that are simply 345 346 354 and that is it that'll be our answer let's go to question 11 draw a line to match each event the time is most likely to take one has been done for you Write your name, it takes about 5 seconds. Clap your hands once. This is extremely short time, so 0 0.5 seconds. Count to 50. It's not likely that anyone's going to count to 50 in 0 0.5 seconds or 5 seconds, so 50 seconds looks like a good approximation. Blow out one candle. Blowing out one candle takes an extremely small amount of time. For most people, that is, you can just blow it out in very less time, 0 0.5 seconds. Since this is only one candle and not more, it won't take as long as five. That's our answer. Let's go to question 12. Safia builds shapes with tiles. The number of tiles in each shape makes a number sequence. A. How many tiles does Safia add to the third shape to make the fourth one? We can see that we add two to get the second one. We add three to get the third one. So to get the fourth one, we of course add four. So we add four tiles. 
Now B, how many tiles are in the seventh shape? If you do not realize yet, this sequence is actually going to be the triangular number sequence. Triangular numbers. That's because, but as you can see, these kind of resemble a triangle because you're adding up one here and two more and another three more and then you add four more, five more like this. It resembles a triangle. Therefore, they're called triangular numbers. And the formula for this is the nth term is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So the seventh shape will have 7 times 7 plus 1 divided by 2 number of tiles. That's 28 tiles. If you do not know this formula for n times n plus 1 by 2, then of course you can just add 4 to get 10 tiles for the fourth one. Then you add 5 to get 15 tiles for the fifth one. Add 6 to get 21 tiles for the sixth one. And for the seventh one, you will add 7. That will give you 28 tiles. So that will be our answer. Let's go to question 13. Here's a rectangle. Anselig uses two of these rectangles to make a hexagon. The rectangle has dimensions of 6 and 8 centimeters. A. What is the area of the hexagon? Well, since we know that she uses two of these rectangles, obviously the area is going to be 2 times length times breadth. That's simply going to be 2 times 6 times 8, since two different rectangles each having an area of 6 times 8. So at the end, we get 96 centimeters squared. That's our answer. B. What's the perimeter of the hexagon? Show you're working. Well, first we know that the length is 8 centimeters here. So we know that this length has to be 6 centimeters. And visually, we can see that if it was drawn the second rectangle like this with 8 and 6, this line would be straight. But we can see that there is an extra line to connect this side to this side. Therefore, this rectangle has to be split like this. And 6, 8, 6, 8 over here. And now we have one more side left to find. And this side is going to be 8 minus 6. And that's 2 centimeters right there. So the perimeter of the hexagon is going to be adding up all the values we have written there. So the perimeter is equal to, we'll start from 8 over here and then work our way around like that. So 8 plus 2 plus 6 plus another 8, plus 6, plus another 8, plus another 6. And we do this, we get 8, 10, 16, 24, 30, 38, 44 centimeters. That's our answer.